Hello, my friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anovella. Today is Friday the 10th, and that means that I have a list for you, a top 10. And today I've chosen historical fiction. Historical fiction is close to my heart. It's something that I've read uh, since the age of 10, and I've kept on reading historical fiction. Now a little bit less, but I'm yearning for some good new books. So yeah, I will keep on reading historical fiction. Well, what is historical fiction? Well, imagine you have Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, and you have by Alexandre Dumas, The Count of Monte Cristo. Only one is historical fiction, although both stories take place in the past. When Victor Hugo wrote Les Miserables, he wrote about the things that was that were happening in his now. Alexandre Dumas wrote in the more or less the same period, but The Three Musketeers or um, The Count of Monte Cristo happened a lot earlier, at least 100 years, 150 years earlier. So that's what makes it historical fiction. Now, my choices. I've tried to be a little, little creative, and the first thing I, that came to mind was a debut novel by Robert Jones, and that's The Prophets. The Prophets is the story of two enslaved boys, Isaiah and Samuel, and they fall in love, and uh, they have uh, a serious relationship, and his, their fellow slaves accept the relationship. But then something happens on the plantation, and I believe that plant it, it's been a while since I've read it. I believe that the plantation is sold to another family, and that changes the vibe on the plantation, and it becomes more and more difficult for Isaiah and Samuel to have a relationship. It becomes way too dangerous. So that's the story. I chose this one because not only it really sets, tells the story of how slavery was at the time, but also how it was to have a relationship. Even now, this is a, a gay relationship, but even for straight relationships, it must have been excruciating hard. Especially when you have children, then you don't know where your children are going and how long you can have them around you. And oh my God, it must have been it must have been horrible, horrible. But the prophets is a good reminder of that period. It uh, also talks about the uh, personal life, the inner life of um, enslaved people. And for me, this wasn't a perfect novel, but I thought the. Um, idea was genius and uh, I highly recommend to read this. A book that I reread uh, a couple of months ago during the summertime is Shogun by uh, James Clavel. I really enjoyed it. It's not that easy to read but I really loved it. So this is uh, the story about, um, oh what was his name? John Blackthorne. John Blackthorne is, uh, came to Japan on a ship. They have to, um, uh, yeah, they, they were in trouble, so they had to stay in Japan for a while. And John Blackthorne was uh, kept prison, uh, a prisoner. And there's one samurai, or shogun, who is really interested in... Um, Blackthorn and especially his knowledge on uh, on what's happening uh, amongst yeah on on the um, English court and uh, international trade and stuff and he was an enormous wealth of intelligence and that is what the story is really about. Of course, the shogun is also in danger because yeah, it's always. Uh, there's always power and politics, and uh, yeah, it's a really interesting story. It it sets the life at um, Japanese courts very well. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I read this 
30 years ago and now a couple of months ago, and I really liked it. It still is very well done. It's not uh, a book that aged badly. So yeah, it's uh, it's a good read. It's a lot of pages though, almost uh, 900. Then another book written by a friend of mine is um, Joan by Catherine J. Chen. Um, she did a masterful job with this book. So this is of course Joan of Arc, Jeanne d'Arc. And what Catherine did here was she made her a real woman. So the story begins very early in Jeanne d'Arc's life uh, when she was a child and she had to grow up with very violent brothers and she had to keep her own and her father wasn't very nice either. And then she got into the French army and uh, yeah, she, she, her career went very steeply uphill. And then, uh, yeah, she met the Dauphin, which is the, the son of, uh, the first to inherit the throne of France. And uh, he appoints her to be sort of, yeah, a military genius and a uh, mastermind uh, to win battles for him. Now, what she did was she actually just used her genius. And um, in those days and even now, um, if you do something extraordinary as a woman, um, she must have been uh, guided by God. <laughs> and so uh, what Catherine did, did was she just stripped away all the religion uh, from this, uh, this story and the book and just kept uh, just kept uh, Joan and that's what makes this book so powerful and beautiful and um, it is a really well retold story. It ends when she's captured and uh, so you don't follow the trial uh, because that's a whole other thing that's more about politics than about Joan. And uh, yeah, so, but it's, it's a really, really good story about being powerful as a woman. And uh, yeah, I highly, highly recommend this book. The next book or the next author I want to talk about is an author that was very important in the 80s, 70s, 80s, and that is a bit forgotten. And uh, that is Colin McCullough. And she wrote a whole series of books, I, th I think at least five, around the Roman Empire. This is The First Man in Rome. There's also Caesar and other books. This is a brilliant series, an absolute brilliant series. She tells actually what happened in the Roman court and yeah, all the, 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 the intrigues and the killings and oh, there's a lot of blood, sex, violence. Oh yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> it would be a great, great, great Netflix story. So yeah, uh, Colleen McCullough, I think she is a bit forgotten, but she belongs in this list and she has to be in this list. Yeah. Colleen McCullough. Then a book that I just read, it's written by Kerry Mayer and the title is, has changed. So I have to, this is, uh, here it says The Bookseller of Paris, but it also um, has another name. I will uh, post a picture of the book. I really, really enjoyed it. This is a retelling of the life of uh, Sylvia Beach, of course. Yes, I'm sorry. And especially her problem she had with James Joyce. Uh, Sylvia Beach was the first woman who dared to publish Ulysses because of its erotic content. But... Yeah, James Joyce betrayed her. And yeah, it's it's a really good, really good book. 
it is m more fiction. It's fiction based on reality. So yeah, but it's it's a good read. It's it was really enjoyable. I I read it in an evening, so really good. Then I also thought of um, one of the books that I read <laughs> at least ten years ago. I have read it since. Yeah, ten years, twelve twelve years ago. Yeah. The Thousand Autumns of Jacob de Zoet. Uh, Jacob de Zoet is a man who is an, an accountant and he has to travel to the East to be able to marry uh, his wife, Anna, uh, to become more wealthy. Eh? And they go, they travel to Deshima, it's a little island uh, close to Japan. And he has to go there to check uh, the books of um, the East India Company and uh, or the VOC, the Dutch VOC. And uh, yeah, um, problem is that he has to stay there, I think. And yeah, this is a brilliant book. Oh, so good, so good, so good, so good. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And then I thought, so many people talk about the same books and Blood Meridian is one of those. Although it is very important, very beautiful, very painful. Um, but there's a very good equivalent and that's uh, Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. John Williams is of course known for his book Stoner and this is about a man who joins uh, the last um, slaughter, really, of buffaloes, and uh, it talks about uh, the nature and the life in uh, America during uh, the 1800s. So, yeah, it's a beautiful book, really well and written, very sparse prose, but so, so well done. There's no one like John Williams. I, I I love John Williams, and this is a beautiful book. I think it's um, at least as good as Blood Meridian. So yeah, Butcher's Cross. A book I only have the Dutch version of is um, by written by Jesse Burton. It is uh, this is the Dutch version, but it's actually uh, the miniaturist. I chose this book. It's also not perfect, but it is um, very well done in the sense that the way she brings 17th century Holland to life is amazing. Amsterdam was alive and vibrant and exotic and strange and Oh, it, it, it was a bit, uh, also a bit gothic, and yeah, it was. Uh, it's a very, very good read. I didn't really get the thing with the puppets and the puppet, the dollhouse. It wasn't really necessary. the The story in itself was extremely well done, but it's clear that 16th, 17th century, and even earlier, are my favorite centuries. So yeah, to read about. And um, yeah, Jesse Burton did a very good job. I also read number two, it's on my shelf, that I didn't like that much. I, I didn't buy it as much. But um, The Miniaturist is highly, highly recommendable. And then what else do I have? Of course, of course. That I will put on number one because there's only the one and only Wolf Hall by uh, Hilary Mantel. Uh, she is such a great author. Um, her trilogy um, is 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 uh, about Thomas Cromwell. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've said it all. It's so well done. So Wolf Hall, um, bring up the bodies and um, or the book Thomas and uh, um, the Mirror and the Light is yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, you have to read this. If you love historical fiction, you must read this book. I, I, oh, yeah. I was flabbergasted the first time I read it. So yeah, that's it. I think I'm at 10. 
Maybe I forgot one, maybe I haven't. Of course, um, The Count of Monte Cristo is genius by Alexandre Tuma. It's a genius book, it's beautiful. Umberto Eco's The Name of the Rose is genius, beautiful. Ken Follett is genius. Uh, there are so many books, so many great books. But these were uh, what I had on my shelf, and I really love them. And I hope you have some new stuff to read and need some new ideas. I will see you back on Sunday for a coffee clutch, not live. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.